I previously explored a concept known as a channel wing, where air is sucked through a U-shaped channel to produce lift at theoretically zero speed. Now in reality, my test results showed that the amount of thrust required to produce this lift force needs to be five times greater than the lift force. Despite this, the original channel wing aircraft produced by Willard Custer had some impressive flight characteristics. Yeah, now it's flying at 11 miles per hour there when it was hovering. Wow. And this comes in and lands at 20 miles an hour depending on the atmospheric pressure. We have had a man run along beside this aircraft and hold to it while it's flying. It flies that slow. So how about we build our own channel wing aircraft and see how well it flies? This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. More on them later. When I carried out the previous channel wing tests, I 3D printed the wing in plastic because this was the simplest solution to creating the curved aerofoil shape. But this also made the channel wing quite heavy. Now, I could have carved it from foam or even assembled it from balsa wood, but a far easier solution was to use Colorfab's lightweight PLA filament. This 3D printer filament expands when heated to produce a foam-like material, meaning the 3D prints weigh less than half as much as regular parts printed from PLA plastic. The rest of the plane will be constructed from foam board, as I feel it's unnecessary to 3D print the whole plane. The foam board was then covered in packing tape to increase its strength, allowing it to be folded into a fuselage shape, as well as adding some colour. I then cut some triangular sections out of the front and rear to taper the nose and tail for better aerodynamics. Shortly afterwards, the channel wings had finished printing, and weighing in just below 28 grams each, I was very impressed. I then attached the two channels together with a carbon fibre spar so the 3D prints wouldn't take any structural load. And these were positioned either side of the fuselage. I could then mount the motors to the carbon fibre spar using these ridiculously long motor nacelles, which is required to get the propeller aligned with the trailing edge of the wing. I then built a very basic tail assembly with just an elevator control surface, as I planned to steer the plane by varying the throttles of the motors. Once all the electronics were soldered up and the motors were spinning the correct direction, it was time to attach some landing gear and take it for a taxi test. Which showed that the landing gear needed to be shifted forward slightly. I then folded some more foam board into the shape of a wing, which matched the aerofoil profile of the channel wing. And the outer portion of the wing was angled upward slightly to add some dihedral, which will give the plane some natural stability. I soon realised that controlling the plane on the ground using differential throttle wasn't going to be easy, especially with the wheels being so far forward. So instead, I thought it might be a good idea to go full throttle and get it off the ground before I had a chance to turn. Which didn't end well. The landing gear was pretty much destroyed and there were multiple cracks in one of the channel wings. But nothing that can't be fixed with a bit of... Duct tape. After reviewing the footage, it seemed that the aircraft was tail heavy, so I shifted the battery forwards and gave it a hand launch. Okay, so I've built a channel wing plane, but what now? Well, the aircraft flies great. It has plenty of lift, but whether the channel wings are better than a regular wing is a tough one. I expected to fly this aircraft really slow for some short takeoffs and landings, but I couldn't notice any significant lift increase with the motors running. With the motors switched off, the plane glided like a brick, which could be proof that running the motors produces lift but it's more likely due to the large drag of the channels. And at just 360 grams all up weight, it's not exactly a heavy aircraft for a one meter wingspan. Also with a weight of 360 grams, using my previous test data, it would need to produce 1.8 kilograms of thrust to lift itself purely from the channel wings, which these two motors are probably capable of producing, but the aircraft isn't, as it has a significant pitch up tendency at high throttle which I think was partly what caused that first crash. This pitching up at high throttle might be useful for short takeoffs, if controlled properly, but it seems to limit the speed of the plane without using a significant amount of down elevator. I tried measuring the landing speeds with and without the motors running, and using the motors made it easy to pitch the nose up just before touchdown, but the actual speed difference between the two wasn't conclusive. Also, seeing how significant the turn rate is with just a small variation in thrust I wouldn't want to find out what would happen if one engine were to fail. I suppose my conclusion to this project is very similar to how I concluded my previous channel wing video, where the theory of sucking air over an aerofoil to produce lift at zero forward speed is really fascinating. However, the huge amounts of thrust required to produce this lift makes it unfeasible in practice. 
Have you ever logged onto Netflix looking for a certain movie or TV series that isn't available in your country? Well, ExpressVPN can help out. I've used ExpressVPN to watch multiple movies and TV series, as the Netflix UK is missing a few of the top choices. But don't think that because you're in the US that you've got all of the content to yourself, because I've actually found out the majority of content is available on Netflix Canada. I couldn't believe that the movie Everest wasn't available in the US, as well as the UK crime drama series Line of Duty. Now to view this stuff via ExpressVPN, you simply click on the country that you want to view from and then click connect. And within a matter of seconds, ExpressVPN reroutes your connection to a country of your choice, allowing you to watch all the content you desire. And on top of this, all your data is securely encrypted, so every piece of data going in and out of your devices is hidden from any unwanted data interceptors. With servers in 94 different countries, the connection is surprisingly fast and won't hinder your internet browsing at all, with just one click. By checking out the link in the description down below or by going to expressvpn.com forward slash Tom Stanton, you can get three months for free. So why not give it a go? Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other videos similar to this, then please click subscribe down below. And a massive, massive thanks to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these videos possible. I honestly couldn't do it without your support, so Thanks once again. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.